Welcome back to Covered. With me in the studio now is Reid Stiven, who is the General Manager of the Canterbury Home Repair Programme. Reid, welcome back. Nice to see you again. Thanks, Vanessa. Tell me about pre-existing damage issue. This is a really big issue, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, well, I think first need to say that the Act constrains us to only paying for repairing damage that was caused by the earthquake. Now, a good example of that is if you've got a chimney fell over on your roof and the roof was rusted out, we can't replace the whole roof. We can only replace the piece that was damaged. The so rest the piece of, that was damaged being the chimney? And, and the, if it goes through the, the iron, then of course we'll replace that, but we can't replace the whole, um, the whole roof cladding. Right. And that extends to foundations. You know, that lots of homes around New Zealand have settled over time for various reasons. We can only repair those foundations that have been damaged as a result of earthquake damage. Now I know you're going to talk to Tim Day, a lead engineer, who'll give a much better explanation of that than I. But it's getting pretty technical, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. And, but, and legal as well, I think, in that the Act constrains us very clearly to the repair of natural disaster damage only, or settlement. OK, so you're talking about the Legal Act yep. here that's laid down in our law. Yes. And of course EQC is, is very much having to play by that. Absolutely. So just run that bit past me again so that so, with the Legal Act. Yep, the Earthquake Commission Act 1993. Yep. Very clear. It responds to natural disaster damage only. So in Christchurch, the damage that was caused by the earthquake, not damage or rotten weatherboards that were there before the earthquake or um, a roof leak that's happened three years after the earthquake, it's what occurred at the time of the earthquakes. That's and, all we can repair. And I suppose a lot of the discussions with you and the people you're working with is where is that line drawn? Yeah, and that's that's the difficult piece. And I think we see lots at the moment about really good engineers that say you should repair to this standard because it's going to protect the house for a long, long time. But actually, the Act only allows to put back as, as an as new condition what was there before. There's an awful lot yes, of discussions there then around yeah. you know, how we actually go ahead and do that. And really, really difficult for lots of our customers to understand. Yeah. Yeah, and Absolutely. that's one of the reasons that we're struggling to get some of the people across the line. Okay. Thanks, Reid. Great. Uh, have a little look at this. Structural engineers are generally called in by the estimators or assessors when they've identified potential structural damage. The role of the structural engineer is to look at that damage, work out whether it's related to the earthquake or some pre-existing condition, and then to come up with a code compliant way of repairing that damage. I'm Tim Day, structural engineer. Today I'm going to be going through a structural inspection of this house and trying to identify any earthquake related damage or pre-existing damage as part of the assessment. Structural engineers that are working on this program all have Washington Accord or, or equivalent degrees. Uh, they've studied for four years at university and generally have spent a fair bit of time working in consulting practices both here in New Zealand and around the world. So we know what we're looking for. We quite often get the question, how do you determine earthquake related damage as opposed to pre-existing damage? One of the most widely used tools is our observation, our eyes, we need to, need to eyeball the damage. So taking the, the overall picture of the house and then I'll move in closer and have a look at the foundations for a start and work my way up through the house from there. And you'd look at um, whether there's any boils in the ground, any humps and hollows, and also through aerial photos we can see a lot of evidence of, of liquefaction as well. Then look at the paths, any steps leading up to the house, uh, any driveways, any other indicators that would suggest that the house has dropped relative to the land. Quite often you find perimeter foundation walls or concrete foundation walls like this will crack around the vents. This one doesn't look to be too bad. We can see around here that the, uh, the superstructure of the house is actually separated a little bit from the, or in fact the plaster more so is separated from the, the top of the foundation. And you can see in here at the corner where the stresses are probably the greatest, that's where it's broken away. Yeah, so that's the, a vertical crack. Most likely this one here was a result of the earthquake because there's been some separation in the, in the foundation. The foundation is rotated outwards and um, there's a point of stress there at the weakest point in the, in the foundation. You can see here that this is the original part of the um, part of the dwelling here and there's been a later extension which was added on um, at some stage probably about 50, 50 or 60 years later and the crack, the damage around here indicates that the, the two discrete parts of the house have tried to, to separate and move away from each other. This is obviously a relatively modern kitchen. It was possibly built at the same time as the, 
uh, the extension to the house, but it's always good to check the levels on the bench tops, especially if they're, they're more modern. You can get an idea of the, the undulations in the floor and um, how much of it might have pre-existed the earthquakes, which is um, a wee bit of drop, but um, it's not too bad overall. Floor levelling, you can use a, a range of different um, bits of equipment. You can use zip levels, which is a, essentially an, an altimeter, which has got gas inside the, um, the cord. Um, you can use lasers, you can use dumpies, you can get a surveyor in to do a, a more complex um, floor level survey. You can get a, an endoscope in underneath um, floorboards or, or through vents. And just have a look at the, the condition of the poles and also the connection between the poles and the bearers if you can. In fact, there's a crack in the perimeter foundation. When the joinery opens and closes freely, it's normally a good indication that the windows haven't racked over. And you can see around the paint lines and the joins in the, in the joinery as well, that it's reasonably good. It indicates that the building hasn't suffered any racking sideways. Good example of lateral stretch in the, in the building here, where it's probably separated somewhere between 10 and 20 millimetres um, from the old part of the house and the new part of the house, the two have just tried to, to separate. So that's what, uh, what we call lateral stretch. And yeah, you can see that line pretty much. If you draw a line through this here, all the way through the roof, and no doubt up into the top floor as well. There was a, uh, a chimney in this house, a brick chimney. Um, there was actually a couple of them, but one that came down during the earthquakes, and it actually came down through the, uh, the, the bedroom upstairs. Now, being an 80 odd year old house, um, the lime mortar will have well and truly weathered. Um, it may well have had um, loose bricks anyway, and it's just a death trap really waiting to happen. You've got three tonne of bricks wanting to come down through the roof. Um, so next time you're, you're getting maintenance done on your chimney, sweeping your chimney, uh, get someone to have a look at it and give it a, a quick structural inspection and make sure that it is actually sound. If you do find when you have the chimney inspected that it is damaged or you're not comfortable with having such a heavyweight structure above your head, um, get it taken down. And you can replace it with a light timber frame or with a metal flue, just for peace of mind. Based on the visual inspection I've carried out today, along with some of the measurements that we've undertaken, it seems quite obvious that there's been some significant earthquake damage to the structure of this house. I'll now go away, have a look at what it would take to repair the house, and pass that design on to EQC. From there, they'll measure it up and determine whether it's economic to repair. When we come back after the break, there's a significant number of houses around Christchurch that have had to be lifted to have repairs done to their foundations. We'll be looking at house lifting and how it's actually done.